Stefan. Hey, Steph. What are you doing? I'm in the house. It's, it's go time. Oh, no. I'm, I'm ready. Let's do this. Oh. Welcome okay. To well built home. <laughs> Did you know that the bathroom is the second most expensive room in your house? And yet when people are house shopping, it rarely gets more than a glance. It makes sense, because unless you have a gorgeous spa-like bathroom, they're really not that glamorous. And yet a poorly laid out bathroom can make getting ready in the morning less enjoyable than it already is. Let's have a look at how to use a bathroom. Ew. Gross. Come on. Oh, should we look at some bathroom terminology? Yeah, that's a great idea. Let's have a look at some samples. Examples. Realtors usually advertise the bathroom as anywhere from a two-piece to a five-piece washroom. A piece is essentially a plumbing fixture. A sink, toilet, shower, tub, bidet, anything that requires plumbing. Bidets are very popular in the UK. You'll rarely see a bidet here. Though bidets are growing in popularity in North America. Dude, it's bidet. Obviously. I was just kidding. Now let's quickly review the common bathrooms you'll find in a home. An ensuite is a private bathroom that connects to a specific bedroom. A powder room is a small bathroom, usually just a sink and a toilet, on the main floor for guests. The main bathroom is usually called the family bathroom. That's where people's children fight in the morning. Unless you have kids that don't fight. If you do, please leave some tips for Stefan and I below. Often people just quickly poke their head into the washrooms when on a showing. I encourage my clients to actually step into the washrooms, close the doors. Then, have a look around. Check the counter space, the toilet, tubs, showers, and just make sure the general layout works for daily use. And again, check the swing of the doors. In Modern Developments, we give this a lot of thought. Even to the extent that if we do it wrong, we'll pull a door out and put the right swing in. For larger families, the ideal will be two sinks in the family washroom. But even if there's only one sink, make sure that there's ample counter space on either side. Let's take a look at some fixtures in general. We'll start with showers. This is a shower with a tile floor and a tile surround, which means the tile goes up the walls. These are considered the highest end, but they also run the highest risk of leaking. And you can't tell if it's been done properly until some time has passed and you've been using it for a while. The tile itself isn't waterproof. The waterproofing is something you can't see, so you have to trust your builder. In the homes that we build, we use a really good local supplier and installer, and that ensures that the product is installed properly and will never have any leakage. This is an example of a fiberglass base with a tile surround. It's still considered high-end, but it's less prone to leakage than a custom tile shower, but it is still prone to some moisture damage along the walls. This is a full fiberglass shower with fiberglass surround. This is what we decided to put in our house because it costs less and it's the most durable. Fiberglass showers put function over form. Now let's take a look at some shower doors. The common ones in our area would be a fully framed door, like this, or a frameless glass door. And of course, there's always the option to use a curtain. A framed door is a less expensive option and doesn't look quite as nice as the frameless doors, but they both function well. Curtains are really popular, quite cheap, and obviously more prone to water damage. Next, let's have a look at tubs. This is a freestanding tub because it's freestanding. A drop-in tub is one that's incorporated into the bathroom surround. One isn't necessarily better than the other, but we went with a drop-in tub because it's easier to clean around and it's more functional but the freestanding tubs are currently the trend. These are not the only two options. There are many more. If you'd like to learn more about different types of tubs, Google different types of tubs. Now let's review some common types of tub materials. I'd recommend an acrylic tub. They clean easily and are more scratch resistant, but they do cost more than fiberglass tubs. Fiberglass is okay if you want to save some money, but they're a little bit harder to clean and scratch a bit more easily. I'd avoid a steel tub as it's prone to chipping and rusting, but they are the cheapest option. Steel tubs are more common in old houses. It's hard to tell the difference between fiberglass and acrylic, but steel is easy to check. 
just give it a flick or smash it with a hammer. I was surprised when Stefan showed me a picture of a steel tub. It looks very similar to fiberglass and acrylic. Let's have a look at some toilet options. When you walk through a home, have a look and see if they used one piece or two piece toilets. One piece is typically a bit more desirable. It's less prone to moisture damage and leaking. Uh, but there's also some really nice two pieces out there right now, like what I'm sitting on here. We have a joint between the base and the tank. Also have a look, see if it's a slow closed lid. That's not that important because it can be added later. Another really nice feature is if the lid can be easily removed for cleaning. And depending on whether or not you think there's a water shortage in your area, you might want to check for the dual flush options. Now let's have a look at some different types of sinks. Beware of steel sinks with a baked on enamel, as the enamel can chip and the steel will rust. Although, if you do see this, it can be repaired. Look under the counter to see if it's a steel sink that might be rusting. Ceramic and porcelain sinks last the longest. Look under the counter to tell if it's steel or just give it a flick. Porcelain and ceramic are both good options, though porcelain is preferred because it's dense, non-porous, and more durable. And of course, when you're looking at bathrooms, don't forget about the countertops. We're not going to talk about that in this episode though, so click on the link below to see our show on countertops. While we were writing this episode, we noticed that there's a lot of videos on YouTube that teach you that stuff like this is bad. Now we keep it pretty basic on our show, but we're gonna give you the benefit of the doubt on this one. If you see anything rotting or moldy, that's bad. Some people think that mildewy caulking is a sign of leakage. In my opinion, those people are wrong and should never be trusted. Especially with kittens. Mildewy caulking can easily be ripped out and replaced. Look for corrosion and moisture damage on the valves and pipes, but don't touch anything on a used home or it could start leaking. Showers and tubs are the most susceptible to water damage. With constant exposure to water, many problems can develop over time. Don't assume everything is okay. I encourage my clients to have a close look at the showers and tubs, check the ceilings under the room the bathrooms are located in, and if there's any water damage under the bathroom, that's a red flag and a sign that the house may need a renovation. Depending on the problem, showers can cost from a few hundred dollars to thousands of dollars to repair. So it's worth a close look. Check the tile, grout, and caulking. Just look. First impressions are a good indication of the general condition of a shower. Turn on the water. See how long it takes to get hot water. This is one of those things that people often don't think of. It doesn't really matter that much, but it's nice to be aware of it before you move in. And make sure that you take your hand out from under the hot water because it's really hot and it could burn you and make sure you turn off the tap, lest you flood the house. This is the part of the show where we beat a dead horse. Walk through the house, look at things, turn things off and on, notice things, look inside of things, open things up. All houses have negatives, but it's so good to know what those negatives are before you move in and not after. So many people spend so little time in the house or walking through the house and they trust a total stranger to inspect it for them. Remember, this is the biggest purchase you'll probably ever make. No one should be more concerned about the overall condition of the home than you. Because you only get what you pay for if you get what to look for. While we were writing this episode, we noticed a lot of pictures on... No, what is it? A lot of uh, videos. On YouTube. On YouTube that, that teach you stuff, stuff like this. Is stuff. Fact, okay. That teach, teach you, you that, that stuff like, like this. this. Okay. <laughs> Jinx! Uh, you owe me a root beer. <laughs> okay. Turn on the hot and cold water. Notice how long it takes to heat up. How long it takes doesn't really matter, but it's important to be aware of it before you move in. But don't keep your hand under the hot water or it could burn you. <laughs>